Namaste. So let's go deeper into the thousand names of Shiva and relish the meanings and the power of verse 9. Aum Divya Yuddha Skanda Guru Parameshti Parat Paraha Anadi Madhya Nidhano Girisho Girijadavaha Divya Yuddha means having divine weapons. And in Shiva's case, we always see him with his trident and his bow and all kinds of other weapons. But it's not that these weapons are powerful in themselves. The weapons are simply symbolic of Shiva's powers, that he has certain potencies because he is the highest god, because he is Brahman. He has certain potencies that no other beings, no other gods have or can have because of his unique position. So, for example, the trident, Shiva's uh, trishul, huh? with its three points, represents the triplicity of being. We talked about this many, many times in older series, how... To have beingness, you have to have a triple, a subject, a verb, and an object, or a subject, an object, and a relation. This is the ontological primitive, or the ontological atom, that is the bare minimum that you need to actually exist. <laughs> so, that means everything in this world is triple. For example, there's three demigods, three principal demigods, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, or Rudra. There's three modes of material nature, passion, goodness, and ignorance. There's, I mean, three worlds, huh? The lower planets, the earthly planets, and the heavenly planets. And on and on and on. And the threeness, triplicity, is fundamental to all kinds of being in this universe. And so Shiva's symbol of the trident means that he is the ultimate controller of all these triples. So let's look into more of these meanings because it also means that these holy names are divine weapons. For example, one time I was having some trouble with my landlord when I was living in Tiruvannamalai. And I couldn't resolve the problem by myself. So at the time, I was in deep, intense worship of the goddess. And she appeared to me in a dream. She didn't say anything, but she gave me a sword, a big, <laughs> mean, old, sharp sword. And so, of course, the meaning was clear. Use your weapons. I give you a weapon. What weapon did she give? Her holy names. So I began chanting Lalita Sahasranamam, which, of course, we have a big series on that, too. <laughs> Lalita Sahasranamam is a very powerful weapon, divyayuda, divine weapon. And when we chant these Shiva Sahasranams, we also get the same potencies. So simply by associating with Shiva, we begin to manifest his qualities, and that includes his potencies. So even though there are some potencies that only he can have, many of them are shared with his devotees, up to including Vishnu. Now, Shiva directly blesses Vishnu. This is narrated in the Shiva Purana, he says that you will have many of the same potencies that I do, including the ability to bestow liberation. And normally, only Shiva has that ability. Only he has that power. But he shares that power with Vishnu. 
So, of course, we're not on the same level as Vishnu. <laughs> but we also can share the potencies and qualities of Shiva through his holy names. Next is Skanda Guru. Skanda is Kartikeya, Shiva's second son. His eldest son is Ganesh, Ganapati. But uh, his younger son is, you know, a real military type guy. Let me give, tell a story that reveals the difference. <laughs> One time Shiva was sitting with Parvati and his sons, and he said, I will give a boon to the first of my sons who can circumambulate the entire universe. Whoa. So Kartikeya got all fired up, and he calls for his chariot. You know, he has this great chariot, which is brighter than the sun and pulled by a hundred white horses, right? So there was all kinds of, of horns and kettle drums and dancing girls and a big celebration, and shoom, off he goes to circumambulate the universe. Okay. Ganesh is just sitting there chanting his mantra. Om Namah Shivai. And uh, Shiva says, well, what about you, Ganapati? Aren't you going to compete for the boon? And Ganapati says, oh, oh yes, Father, of course I'd. I will, you know. So he gets up and very calmly, <laughs> very calmly walks around Shiva and Parvati and sits back down again. There, Father. Now, what boon will you offer? <laughs> so the message here is that intelligence beats brute force. That if you have penetrating intelligence, if you have deep knowledge, if you have insight, that you can do things far beyond the power of brute force, even great force, by the power of intelligence, deep insight. Next, Parameshti. Parameshti. Parama means the highest, and shta or stan derived from the verbal root, sthana, means standing. So Shiva is standing at the height of everything. He is the greatest of all. He is beyond everything. He is beyond even our estimation of how great he is. We can't imagine it. So he's parameshti. And paratpara means greater than the greatest. Huh? Para means the greatest, the highest, the most, the topmost of anything. And paratpara means the greatest of those. So of all things, Shiva is not only the greatest, but he's beyond the greatest. He's the source of the greatest. So this is the exalted quality and position of Lord Shiva. Anadi Madhya Nidano. I love this name. It means he has no beginning, no middle, and no end. The terms are irrelevant because he is transcendental. He is eternal. He's beyond eternal even because he's beyond time. Totally, whatsoever. Time has no effect on him. He's the origin of time. He's the source of time. So... He is not only in control of time, but he himself is completely beyond time. He has no beginning, middle, or end. He is just endless and infinite and incomprehensible. Giri Sho. Giri means hill or mountain. And Isha, of course, means lord, controller, the first. So this has numerous interpretations. Girisha, the first mountain, is Mount Mandara. Mount Mandara is the home of the demigods, and it was used at the beginning of the universe to churn the ocean of milk, the causal ocean, where Vishnu lives, to produce so many different substances and manifestations. 
So that's one interpretation. The other interpretation is he is king of the mountains. He enjoys the mountains. Even though it's cold and harsh climate, to him, it's like a tropical beach, you know? And none of this physical qualities affect Shiva. So he could be in the most harsh situation, but it doesn't affect him whatsoever. He simply is what he is. Huh? I am what I am. <laughs> and finally, Girijadava. Girija is Shakti, Parvati, her form as Parvati, the daughter of the mountain, Girija, mountain born. And Adara, the husband. So he's Girijadara, the husband of the mountain born, lotus faced goddess of fortune. And that is his eternal position. That is his role in this universe. That he is the husband of the goddess of everything. So he pretty much can get whatever he wants. <laughs> no, totally. Whatever he says goes. He's the husband. He's the controller, the swami of the goddess of nature, the goddess of fortune, the goddess of the existence of the universe, everything even up to including consciousness. So he is the ultimate controller. Aung Tatsa. Aung Shakti. Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.